Welcome to Sound Sleuth. Today we're gonna to build Maurice, an immersive microphone array. Technically, it is a symmetrical ORTF 3D array. To me, it's much easier to say Maurice, so I'm gonna call the microphone Maurice. We start off with some microphone capsules. They're your classic um, cardioid capsules, and they are angled 110 degrees apart, spaced 17 centimeters apart, which is what gives us ORTF. And so instead of recording like you would for normal stereo recordings, we're gonna take that mic and we're gonna rotate it vertically to capture height information. And we're gonna take that and mount it to a 3D printed holder or, or base. And with four of those setups, we end up with our a complete microphone array that's very light and compact and actually sounds really good on par with mics costing thousands of dollars more. So how did I get to where we are today? I started off with these microphone capsules in an on-camera ORTF setup. Let's go listen to what that sounds like now. Sounds pretty good, huh? So imagine what kind of height information we could capture with microphone capsules like that built into an array. And for those of you who want to do field recording, we have the version over here that just has wind protection on it. You can put it, leave it outside all night long, record. Sounds fantastic. Let's go get into the build. This is the build portion of an instructable. You can find the link to that in the YouTube video description. There are things there that are not included here, so please read that along with, of course, watching this video. There are two main parts to building Maurice. In essence, we're going to build eight microphones and then a 3D printed frame that holds everything together. The frame aligns the microphones so that they face where they need to, lets you do a quick setup and breakdown of the mic, and lets you mount it to a light stand. Let's start with the microphones. These use 16 millimeter cardioid capsules from JLI Electronics. The capsule has a built-in FET or field effect transistor. We're wiring each capsule to an XLR connector using something called the Simple P48 circuit. The Simple P48 uses two components for the entire circuit. Each XLR is color-coded so that we can keep track of the position of each microphone in the array when it's connected to the recorder. To make things simple, we're using resistor color codes for this, one through eight. If you've never learned color codes for resistors, here they are. Each microphone is getting 12 feet of Mogami W2697 microphone cable. This makes the whole build relatively easy to do. The first thing we need to do is wire the simple P48 components to each XLR connector. That consists of one resistor and one capacitor. Quick review here of the Simple P48. This is a deceptively elegant way to build a professional microphone. It uses two components in addition to the two internal resistors that supply the 48 volts. Here's how this works. There is 48 volts supplied to one side of the FET via the internal 6.8K resistor and the mic preamp recorder connected to pin 3 of the XLR connector. The other side of the FET is connected to ground via the 100K resistor that we're adding. When the FET biases itself, we end up with about 3 to 9 volts across the FET. The 100K resistors chosen for the capsule and FET we are using, different capsules may use different values. We also couple the FET 100K resistor junction to pin 2 of the XLR with a 3.3 microfarad capacitor. Here's how this all works. The incoming sound causes a positive pressure to be applied to the internal diaphragm of the capsule, which will move closer to its backplate. This causes the internal voltage on the capsule to go up and the FET to conduct more. As it conducts more, the voltage across the FET goes down. The end result is an increase in voltage on pin 2 and a decrease in voltage on pin 3. This is exactly what you want your microphone preamp to see. The other thing we need to do to the mic capsule is make it a two-wire capsule 
versus a three wire capsule. This is easily accomplished by connecting the source terminal to ground. We will do that as part of the build. Okay, let's build them. Take one of the 3.3 microfarad capacitors and bend the negative lead upward past the capacitor body. Twist that to one side of the 100 K ohm resistor. Solder those together and trim it back about the same length as the capacitor. Trim the plus lead of the capacitor and the other lead of the resistor to about a quarter inch long. Place the XLR connector and a small hobby vise and tin the solder cups for pins 1, 2, and 3. Solder the resistor to pin 1 and the capacitor to pin 2. Cut 8 pieces of Mogami 2697 to 12 feet long. You can use a different length, but this is what I found to be most useful. You can make them shorter if you're going to mount the recorder close to the mic. Prep a piece of Mogami by sliding on the XLR boot and then stripping off a little more than half an inch of the outer insulation. Cut the red wire to about a quarter of an inch and strip just a bit of the end of both the white and red wires. Tin those, then bend the white wire up as shown. Connect the copper shield to pin 1, the red wire to pin 3, and the white wire to the resistor capacitor junction. Inspect your work, then assemble the XLR. Repeat this for the remaining seven XLR assemblies. Okay, let's glue the mic capsules into their holders. Using a small amount of E6000 glue, mount each capsule into its holder. Let the glue dry for about four to six hours. Now for the mic capsule wiring. Here we're going to both make the connections to the other end of the Mogami cable and connect the source to ground, which are labeled S and G on the capsules. Strip back about half an inch of the outer insulation. Twist the copper shield to one side and clip it off. It is only used to shield the inner conductor. The other end is connected to the XLR pin 1 ground. Strip a small amount of insulation from the red wire and tin the end. Strip back about 3 eighths of the white wire's outer insulation. Twist that back and tin it. Place the white wire along the S and G pads and trim it so it's just long enough to connect both of them. Clean the tip of your soldering iron and tin it. Immediately solder the white wire across the S and G terminals to connect them and the white wire. Solder the red wire to the D connection. Repeat this for the remaining seven microphones. Okay, test all the microphones one at a time. Ensure you don't touch the capsule and have it resting on a non-conductive surface. Common issues are not getting the S and G connections complete. Assemble the ORTF arms. Neatly coil up each mic assembly and lay them out so you can select them by color of their XLR connector. We're going to glue the capsule holders onto the arms. Use a small dab of E6000 on each of the small mounting holes as you press them in. Where they go is critical to proper operation of the microphone. Review the chart and the instructable. Okay, here we go. Arm number one upper is brown. Arm number one lower is green. Arm number two upper is red. Arm number two lower is blue. Arm number three upper is orange. Arm number three lower is purple. Arm number four upper is yellow. And arm number four lower is gray. There are lots of photos in the Instructable as well, so please see those. Let this dry for a few hours. Okay, it is helpful to mount the base on a small tripod for the next steps. Screw in the quarter 20 pieces so that the knurled nut is on the bottom. Place all the arms in their corresponding spot on the base. Press a wire holder clip as shown here for the top and bottom capsules. Press the Mogami wire into the wire clip so it is neatly dressed in and there is a natural lay to the wire without tension on the capsule. Test all of them again. Now's the time to find any issues in the wiring. Once you know the wiring's all good, apply a bit of E6000 glue to the wire in the clip. This helps long term. Okay, now we're going to dress in all the wires. Neatly separate all the wiring and lay it out flat on a table or other working surface. For each arm, join the upper and lower capsule wires together as shown here with a tie rat. 
Now take arms one and two and combine those four wires into one bundle with a tie wrap. Add a second tie wrap about four to five inches lower from the first one. Repeat this for arms three and four. Now neatly combine all eight wires into one bundle with a tie wrap. Continue adding tie wraps every eight inches or so until there is about two feet of wire left. Separate out inputs one and four into one bundle of four XLRs. That would be the brown, red, orange, and yellow ones. Tie wrap those together about six inches past the separation. Add one more tie wrap four to six inches from that one. Repeat this for inputs five and eight, which are green, blue, purple, and gray. This makes it super easy to connect the mic to a Mix Pre 10 or a Zoom F8N Pro. Congratulations, you just built an amazing immersive microphone. But wait, if you're gonna do field recording, you'll wanna add some wind protection and here's how to do that. For each arm, carefully fit the wind protection frame around the capsule and press it onto the arm from the back side. The upper slot piece should come right in at the base of the capsule cutout on the arm. Repeat this for the remaining seven wind protection frames. Apply a bead of E6000 to all the joints and let that dry. Once it's dry, carefully slide the fur wind protector over the frame. It should pop over the bottom frame ring. There will be a small gap on that joint. The wind protection works well on a decent breeze, but not a full gale force wind. All right, let's use this thing. On the recording side, we need to ensure that each mic gets the same gain setting. Both the Zoom F8N Pro, which I'm using, or the Mix Pre 10 allow you to record multi-track wave files and have all the channels locked to a single trim control. I use 32-bit float recording, which I highly recommend. Please see the manual for your recorder on how to set this up. You can also record in the studio. Ever thought of an immersive spot mic? Well, Maurice works well for that. It also works great for room sound, immersive reamping, and immersive impulse response capture. Okay, I have a Reaper session open here with no audio in it yet, and we're gonna bring some audio in from Maurice that I recorded in my backyard. And of course, I live in Texas, so we're gonna have some cicadas going on, and I do live in the DFW uh, flight path, so we'll have an airplane flyover in there. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is bring the waveform sizes up a little bit more just so we can see them. You do that with shift and the up arrow uh, on the Mac. So if I listen to this now, you're gonna hear, just hear stereo, um, and you're actually only listening to two of the microphones that are just microphones one and two because those will map directly out to the outputs one and two. So let's look at how we need to decode this binaurally. So I'm going to bring up an effects window here uh, and add a plugin for binaural. I'm adding the Sparta binauralizer. Um, and I have a preset that I already set up here um, for Maurice. And that gives us eight inputs um, to mapped out to binaural. And what I've done is I set this up so that the azimuth and elevation correspond to each of the mic capsules and where they're pointing. So mics one through four right here um, are at 55 degrees high. Mics five, six, seven, eight are minus 55 degrees, the angle down. And then we just rotate around uh, mic capsules one through four, and then symmetrically below that mic capsules five through eight. Okay, so let's listen to this, and then I'm going to enable rotation. Uh, uh, kind of, I don't know why it comes up with uh, that 20 degrees and the 1.7. So just zero those both out. I've got rotation enabled. And then what I'm going to do is rotate from the left, as if your head is tilted all the way, looking to the left, not tilted, rotated, looking over your left shoulder. Spin around and go to your right shoulder. I'll rotate through, and um, we'll hear what this sounds like. Bring the levels up a little bit. And here we go for some rotation. And we have an airplane flyover coming up.
look what we need to do to map this out uh, to a 7.1.4 system setup. So we won't need the binauralizer plugin for that. We're going to delete that one and then we're going to add in a channel mapper plugin. So instead of BIN, let's go to map for mapper. Um, and this plugin is included with Reaper and it's really fantastic. Uh, super easy to use, intuitive. And it was one of those ones I didn't even realize they had until I started diving in there. So notice we have eight inputs and eight outputs. It is a eight channel um, wave file. So that's the number of internal channels we have on, on that track. Or So what we need to do is make it 12 because there are 12 outputs for 7.14. We can either do it here by going to 12 or you could actually come over into the routing and do it right here to make it 12 track channels. So here's what we have. We've got uh, the, by default, it just wrap maps channels, you know, one, one through 12 inputs to outputs one through 12. And I have a preset set up for Maurice that actually maps the microphones directly to the corresponding channels. So remember mics one through four are actually our height microphones. So mics one and two map to, uh, height left and right front, and then uh, three and four map to height rear, um, left and right, and then five and six map directly to outputs one and two uh, main, um, I like to call that ear level, left and right, and then left and right rear are going to be our channel seven and eight. And they swap over just because of the nomenclature and, and where things are as I rotate around the um, the microphones. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do, because um, this will mess you up if you haven't done it, and once again, I'm on my MacBook Pro, not my Mac Studio. So if I go to the routing here, I only have two track channels on the master bus, which means once again, we're only going to get two channels out. So we would need to make this 12, and by default on my Mac Studio, um, in my studio, I have that set up directly to map out to 7.1.4. Okay, this just touch the basics of what you can do with this microphone. Uh, Maurice is quite uh, the unique little immersive audio microphone, compact, full featured, lets you get out there and record an immersive. I'm dying to hear what you guys do with it uh, once you go ahead and build one. In conclusion, we've covered how to build Maurice, how to set up Use Maurice after you record it in Reaper. And once again, just to conclude, Maurice is based on the ORTF concept of two microphones facing 55 degrees apart, space 17 centimeters apart, except we take that and we go vertical with it in an array of eight microphones. So it's non coincident. Sounds fantastic. Um, please see the YouTube description and extra content, um, including some files that were recorded with Maurice in their native format for a pipe organ, a choir, and an orchestra, little snippets of all of them. I think you really enjoy them. It is a great microphone.